name is Perry Goldberg. I am a dentist by profession. Moved down to Dallas 18 years ago. I grew up in Montreal in a Jewish family. My grandfather, who came over from Russia originally, was very, very religious, a very devout Jew. And then he became very disillusioned. He thought that a lot of the, the just the general practices and everything were kind of hypocritical. He became totally, totally disillusioned with that. And so he went from being extremely observant to not being observant at all. So I grew up in, in Montreal in a Jewish, I had a lot of Jewish friends in a Jewish community where we were not very observant, a set, more a secular upbringing. And so I grew my, almost my entire life as sometimes not knowing if I even believed in God. Not atheist, but probably more agnostic. And so that's, that's how things were, you know, for the majority of my adult life. I moved down here to Dallas, um, as I said, about 18 years ago. The lady who worked in my office, who is now my wife, started to, you know, she started to look at my, at, at, at me, at what I had accomplished, because I've done very well in terms of my profession. I've traveled and lectured and taught all over the world in my field. And it was kind of funny because she started to preach to me a little bit. Okay, and she started to say, don't you know, don't you think this is part of a plan? Or at one point she said, don't you think you should be giving God some of the credit for what you've accomplished? And very seriously, I thought about it and I said, well, I suppose I could give him some of the credit. That's when she started. So she, you know, progressively she started basically working on me, lecturing, pointing out things, pointing out things to me that had to be part of a plan that were too much to just be coincidental. And so we got married five years ago. Donna, my wife, is not Jewish, a very, very strong believer, was saved many, many years ago. God, Jesus, Yeshua was, was a very big part of her life, her daily life. We got married. For our first anniversary, we weren't sure what, to, what we wanted to do. And she decided that it was time for me to go to Israel. I had never been to Israel before. She had been to Israel 10 years prior to that. Uh, she said she walked off the plane, she fell down on the ground, and she started to cry. She just felt this incredible connection with the land, with the people. And so she decided that it was really time for me to maybe explore some of my Jewish roots and to go to Israel. And I wasn't happy about it. I wasn't sure that I really wanted to go. What I did do was, I'm a very avid photographer, and so I kind of looked at this trip as if it was going to be a, f a photographic trip for me. We went to Israel in March of 2011. I longed for the trip to see what it was, but really not very much into anything. But the mo again, the moment I stepped off the plane, I started to sense something. We went on an organized tour with um, Zola Levitt Ministries. I was the, there were 50 of us in the group. I was the only Jewish person in the entire group. So I was, the, I was the token Jew. Jeff was le the leader of our group. Explain a lot of these things that we were seeing in a lot of the locations and sites from a, from a Jewish perspective, which to me was, a, was a, an education, it was an eye-opener. I had never thought of these things in that term before. As we progressed through the week, more and more, a lot of the stuff that he was saying about Jesus, about Yeshua, being Jewish, about everything basically being a Jewish story, it all started, you know, it, it made sense to me. But you need to understand, as a, as a Jew growing up, we're always taught you do not believe in, Jewish, in Jesus. As, as our two weeks progressed while I was in Israel, I started to, I was wrestling with some things. And I was starting, because I've always been very analytical, I have to understand things, I have to be able to figure things out in order for me to believe them or accept them. And a lot of what I was hearing made sense, but it was contrary to, to my upbringing. What I was curious about was I wanted to know how he, as born Jewish, how he made his transition from a traditional Jewish home to being a believer in Yeshua and a Messianic Jew, apart from what I was experiencing. Okay, I had two absolutely amazing experiences where I was 100% convinced that I had experienced Yeshua. Jesus. I was at, when we visited the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall in Jerusalem, I was at the, at the wall, and I don't, I'm not a person who prays often, but I felt compelled to pray. It was a pressure, it was a heat, it was just this presence that engulfed me completely, and I almost heard a voice saying, 
welcome home. This is where you belong. I'm with you. And I felt that and it was just, it was almost all I could do to stand up. We went on with our tour. And then as another part of our tour, we went to the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus was arrested. And so we had some private prayer time and we were told you can just wander around and, you know, and, and pray on your own if that's what you want to do. And so my wife went one way, I went another way. And here are these big, the, the olive trees that are thousands of years old. And I sat down under one of the trees and I started to pray again and again this presence came. It was, it was exactly as I had experienced at the wall. I love you, this is where you belong. I felt, I felt a presence, I heard a voice. It wasn't around for anybody else to hear, it was in my head. I heard a voice say to me, you know, I have a pretty good imagination at times. There was no question about this at all. This was something that I was experiencing. Uh, I felt weak, I nearly came to tears and I don't cry very easily. But it was a very, very, I couldn't describe the voice because it was in my head. Okay, it wasn't like I hear you talking to me or somebody else talking to me. It was in my head, it was a private thing. It was like a welcome back, you're home, you belong to me and I love you. When he, the presence that I felt, it wasn't like somebody picking me up, it was like, some, like being encased and it gave me this tremendous sense of now you're safe. It was, we were winding down on our tour and so I'd asked him, I said, you know, I approached him the morning that we arrived in Jerusalem and I asked him if maybe if he had some time after that evening, after the teaching, if he could spend a little time with me, if he'd maybe share some of his, his experiences with me and that I had some questions for him. How do I, how do I rationalize this mo absolutely I mean, I'm trying to describe it, but it's not descri it's indescribable. How to, dis how to describe and, and ras rationalize my experiences my, with my Jewish background, and then how that translates to where he was. Because in a way, that's kind of what I wanted for myself too, but I just didn't know how to make that step. Don and I went up to his apartment, and we sat with him for a while, and we talked about the trip and what I had experienced. When he explained to me and made it very, very clear that I didn't have to give up being Jewish in order to believe because everything else was a Jewish story. But when he told me that personally I didn't have to relinquish being a Jew in order to accept Yeshua, Jesus, as my Savior, then as I said, it was like turning on a light switch. It all made sense. After a couple of minutes, he said, would you like me to pray with you to accept Jesus as your Savior? And I, and I mean, it just, I didn't even have to think about it. I said, yes, please, I'm ready. And so he guided me through this. And I went and I prayed with him and I accepted Yeshua, I accepted Jesus as my Messiah. That was, I didn't know where that was gonna take me. And I still don't know where that's taking me. This may seem a little bit silly, but I started seeing the number 1111 everywhere all the time. I would take out my phone and look at the time, it was 11.11. I would open a book or something, there was an 11.11 in it. And it happened over and over and over again, much more often than could be coincidental. One day Donna came to me and she said God spoke to her and said, look at Isaiah 11.11. And that's where that refers to God bringing his people back to the land. So in a way, if I, in hindsight, you know, he had a plan for me. But with the 11-11, this was God's way of saying, I'm going to be bringing you back to where you belong. I know that there's nothing that he can't do. So I know that even through difficult times or things like that, he's going to take care of me. And from that point on, my life has been, there has been in the back of my mind, there's always been a feeling that now I'm safe. There's only certain things that I can worry about. There's only certain things I have control about. There's a lot in my life, in all of our lives, that we have no control over. But He has control. And I know that He's going to take care of me. And this is what I, this is what I firmly believe now.